I want to talk about something which I don't think I've mentioned before relating to shifting or really holographic universe, reality, any of this stuff. And that is this idea of detachment from reality. I think the idea of detachment comes from various different places where, let's say for example with the Buddhist philosophy, right, where you should, they say the source of all suffering is detaching from the physical and detaching from like the wants and desires of the ego and the mind and all, all of that stuff. That seems in many ways similar to the modern shifting concept where people have this idea that they want to shift and kind of escape to a different or another reality. And there's a very important distinction here, and that is that you should not become obsessed with the idea of shifting or changing this reality, because fundamentally this reality we're in now, right? And by the way, before I go too much further into this, we all know, right? We, we There's a lot that we don't know, me included. So <laughs> in many ways, a lot of this is kind of a bit of speculation because while there's a lot of things we do know, there's also a lot of stuff we don't know relating to reality, consciousness, the hologram uh, and that kind of thing. But that being said, I think it's pretty logical to assume that we are here for a reason on this earth, in this reality, uh, in these bodies right now. It's for a reason. And I believe that we chose to be here. Now, of course, there's different takes on this, like there's the nihilistic um, approach where people would say, well, no, it's just all random. It's all pointless and we're all just meaningless. But I don't think that makes any sense, really, especially when you consider the, the kind of the fingerprints of the gods, if you will, right? The Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, 1.62, the perfect ratio. These sequences and codes are found throughout nature in the human eye, in the universe structures, in the formation of galaxies. So there's just so many things like that which make it obvious that this was created and that we are here on purpose for some kind of reason. So that being said, if it's probable that we chose to be here, then we should really think carefully about deciding or trying to leave or change this reality because while it can seem and trust me i get it okay at the moment things seem really crazy things seem very polarized and you can get caught up in it you know you can get overwhelmed and obsessed with the negativity um or the positivity you know you can go either way in, in this world and it's very easy to get wrapped up in that and kind of forget the fundamental truths the things like that we're all connected that we probably are here for a reason and chose to be here and that there's no separation. So, and this is because I was having this interesting conversation with somebody online uh, the other day about polarity and duality. And we have to remind ourselves that po while polarity is essentially what's happening right now, you know, let's say any issue, any situation will cause or create polarity at least at the moment. It will cause one group of people to, to go to one side and the other to the other side, and they will both defend their views aggressively without being able to see things unbiased and neutral, kind of like from the middle standpoint. You've seen this very, very much case with the COVID thing, right? In the last couple of years, it's been so polarizing. People have been so certain of their viewpoint that facts don't seem to matter to them. Other people's opinions and justifications are irrelevant to them. And we, and but both, pe both sides can be guilty of that, myself included. You know, I try to work from the standpoint that I don't 100% know that, that I'm correct about a given thing. What I do is I tend to connect as many dots as I can, research from as many different varied sources as I can and see what is the big picture here, what is the most likely truth. And then I go from there. But I'm always willing to have my mind changed. I'm always open to being proven wrong. But I think a lot of people are not are not like that. They're polarized, they snap to one side or the other, and they assume that that is the truth and nothing else is possible. So the polarity is, is real, you know, it's happening and it's especially in the last, well, the last few days or depending on when you're watching this, there's kind of like war, talks about war and all this conflict and stuff like that. And, um, and you know, that causes polarity as well. That causes people, one side of people to justify one side, the other to justify the other side. And then suddenly we're in the same situation that we've been in for most of history where there's you know one side that think they're right another side that think they're right they fight about it lots of people die and ultimately what really happens you know people die and then the government or control structures consolidate power and usually get stronger or you know one side will lose so they obviously get weaker and uh, the other side will will win what is very interesting by the way if you want to go down a rabbit hole is when you look into who owns and who controls slash funds both sides of a given war and you'll find that almost always throughout history almost always the case is that they are funded by banker family bloodlines. Bloodlines who have established central banks in various countries who decide on the wars, who's going to win and lose, because ultimately whoever wins, the bankers win, right? The people, the, the bank in control of the currency of the given country.
country. Whoever's in power in the governments, in the um, you know the politicians, and you know, they're, they're kind of irrelevant, really. They have, they hold no power truly uh, over the organisations, the private organisations that print the country's money and this has always been the case you know these banking families have funded both sides of the war so they profit twice as much but I, I don't think it's just about profit I think it's more about control and consolidation of power and authority but what's interesting is that even though that is the case and you can you can demonstrate this people still feel like they have to attach themselves to one side or the other and this has always been the case and then they justify through that attachment they justify oh well it's fine if we turn off their money <laughs> for example I can't believe that I saw this the other day it's fine if we turn off their money, if we disable their internet services, if we punish them, when the truth is it's not actually them that have done anything wrong, it's the leaders of that country and then those leaders have only done it as a result of the leaders of the other country doing things that I mean it, you know the more you dig into it you realize it's actually it's actually a very very tiny group of people a very tiny group we're talking like a handful you know like a few dozen to a few hundred people in the world who are really deciding these things and making these wars and conflicts and polarity happen but if you take those out of the picture things would be so much better you know there would be no there wouldn't be this polarity or at least not as much and it would be much more peaceful and less confusing and you know and it's an, another example of this is with the um uh, the how do i say this without being censored <laughs> the the c o v thing right if you just imagine for a second imagine with me for a second if for the last few years there was no TV, there was no radio, and there were no stickers on the ground, stickers in the front of shops, in the windows, telling you to wear certain things and to stand certain distances apart, imagine for a second that that was not the case, and that you had never heard of this thing, and that nobody else had either. Literally nothing would happen. There would be no difference, and we would have gone about our lives completely as normal. And this has been the case with like Amish communities, with communities who are just not in, not, not in that system. They don't have the news the media telling them what to be afraid of and what to think about it it just wouldn't it didn't didn't happen and it wouldn't have happened if we didn't have that system telling us what to think and what to be afraid of and what to think about those who are not afraid of that thing and it just blows my mind how this is uh, able to happen anyway that was a huge tangent wasn't it i've gone on for about four minutes about that <laughs> so where was i yeah so with um shifting and kind of the idea that polar the the situation now seems bad. It does seem bad. But you've got to remember that throughout history, situations where there was a lot of pressure, stress, conflict, difficulty have always been the catalysts for human growth. And this goes and this goes right back to, you know, like the Indus Valley civilization and like really, really ancient cultures in the emerging world where difficulty caused them to create solutions, grow, collaborate and find the best way of doing things and advance their technology. When you look at it from that perspective, yes, it's difficult, but I think we chose to be here for a reason. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that we can't influence or change this reality because I believe we can. But I'm just saying another perspective to have is that although things seem bad, I don't think it's healthy to try and be obsessed with the idea of escaping from this. While we can influence and manipulate it, I don't think we should be obsessed with the desire to completely leave this reality. Um, and this is a you know point of view that I've come to through a long, long uh, period of research and thinking and contemplation. And you know, because I started out sort of discovering that we can uh, manipulate and influence this reality, manifestation. Um, we can shift to different things and uh, influence and manipulate things. But I think we chose to be here for a reason. And I'm not quite sure exactly what that reason is yet, but I'm closer to figuring it out every day, as much as I can at least. And I would love to hear your opinions as well. But yeah, so this, I understand, will probably be quite controversial to most of my audience. I understand that. So I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts down below. Please be nice to each other and obviously to me as well, but more to each other because uh, just remember there's a person behind each comment and you don't want to, you, you, you just want to be respectful and give your opinion without kind of judging people. Because again, th that all that does is create this polarity that I'm talking about. When you, you know, leave a comment judging someone or um, attacking or criticizing in a harsh way, it just causes more polarity. So yeah, leave a comment letting me know what you think and I'll see you next time.